Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard to get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207 242 8961 or email him at chase tree and tractor service jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you. Everybody, it's was that time, your favorite time of the week. I'm Larry Seidling, and the man of the mills, Mr. Bobby Weir. We got Dinah Day behind the camera. Behind I was a little late today, Larry. Yeah, I know. You, you, yeah, you, you, you that, just, I mean, they're paving this whole county. I mean, oh, it's hot top going everywhere. Yeah, paving going on everywhere. So, anyway, I got to my car this morning, and there's 10 guys there from Hager's, and they're uh, saying, you can't leave. I said, what do you mean you can't leave? No, they're, so they're paving. Said, so anyway, it's nice to have a little notoriety yeah, because they, I said, I got to go tape was up. And the guy down the end on the bridge says, Bobby, let him go. Right? Yeah. So I was able to get We are here. star. Yeah, I was You're able the star to, of uh, Tamar Scott Mills. I was, the able, I, was able, the I was able to get here. You're the mayor. But so. Have you uh, seen the hot top up, the, up to the new chamber building? Beautiful. Doesn't look great, Beautiful. huh? Beautiful. Coming into seed, I think, today to finish seeding up. Yeah. The, the pavers are in. The electricians are in. They've got lights in there. They're we're wait, we're waiting there. And baited, with bated breath. When are we going to have well, the opening? Well, I'm thinking I'm, I'm optimistic on the 15th of August will be in there. Okay. I'm optimistic, which All is right. you know, three weeks. You got a big, big moving job. You have a caravan walking boxes across the street. <laughs> so, so we will. Hey, the, the office could be a couple miles away, but it's right across the right street. Right across the street, yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're maybe right after Labor Day we'll have a dedication, grand, mm -hmm. grand, grand opening and whatnot. But, uh, but it's we invite people to stop in, take a look, look around, and the pavers are up, and uh, we're doing good stuff. So, Bobby, we have a correction. Well, I don't know if yeah, it's a we correction. We have a, a grammatical. The character of the quiet is not o o Mahoney, it's Omani. Omani, Brian Omani. Brian Omani is the character of the county. Jonathan, Ryan. I I think Jonathan has. I, I think he's got a, a liking for this guy. He must have been a teacher. Probably was a teacher and, when he was there. Yeah, so probably uh, you know he it meant something. So always one teacher in your life. I mean, I never had it. No, but, yeah, no. There's always one teacher in your life that, you know, hit home with you. So anyway, I, I, our teachers, were, the one that hit home was the one with the ruler on the knuckles. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. but Mr. You Oma feared them. Mr. Omani has yeah. been at Lincoln Academy since 2005. Yeah, almost he, 20 years there. He's now the head of the history department. Yeah. Right? And uh, so our, our technician here, Eli, is going to have him next year. Yeah. I think he's looking forward to it. And, uh, boy, this uh, Willard Pierpont and Chris Johnson up in Well, Solo. they're going at it, aren't they? Yeah, they, they really got into it. But anyway. You know, and they, that's, that's you know, the sad part about that. Who really loses in that deal? Yeah. The, the townspeople. The people. They got no paved roads. They got no paved roads. And, and they got a guy who obviously knows what he's doing. Willard Pierpont. His ego is not you know, not going to let Chris Johnson, and I'm not sticking up for Chris Johnson either. And Chris Chris trying to represent the, the people and yeah. do whatever. And his personality is getting in the way, and they don't see the betterment of the of the situation. Well, the, you know, Ham's too about too often. Willard Pierpont was a road commissioner for three years. You know, it sounds like he hired people he liked, and the selectmen are calling him on it. You know, he's got a he's probably guy's probably got a history with working with different. Contracts. Well, you know, you do you do have a tendency to hire people you like, and why do you like them? Because they've done good work for you. They've they've been accountable. You know, there are a lot of reasons why you hire those people rather than an unknown commodity. I know certainly in my business career. I've gone into situations where I was an unknown commodity, and I had to prove it myself on time yep. delivery and pick up. And the, my guys were, you know, always uh, polite and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really blame him for that either. How about this guy, guy over in Waldeboro? 
Man. Well, Matthew Brakely, he, ran, he was a candidate. He's uh, going to jail, too. Yeah, he, January, another January 6th guy. Yep. What is it, over 1,000 people have been? Almost 1,100 people yeah. have been arrested. And and, uh, and they all gone to court? They're probably they, waiting for court. Some of them gone to court, some of them gone to jail. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, Kate Bell, she's got a new company. She wasn't at the Capitol on January 6th. She nope. was busy setting up her business. She's got a new business called High Tide Printing. And it's right there on Railroad Avenue, right before Reds. I think it's right next to the Oyster Guys. Were here, was it Oyster Guys right. on the wheels or something? That, that, that whole stretch, Yeah, that's becoming a hub over yeah. there. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. And you know, in the, <laughs> all those people lined up for Red Z's, what better happened than they're right in front of her building? If I, I mean, <laughs> they should be shocked and oysters to the people in line and she should yep. be telling, selling t-shirts. Yep. Yep. We gotta, we gotta console, we gotta, con, well, we gotta connect with them on that. That's a gold mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if we were younger, Bobby, we'd be over there hawking margaritas or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. that, that energy doesn't seem to be inside younger people. No. It does, just no, doesn't. No, you know? that entrepreneur will uh, get out there and squeeze a dollar. Make this, the buffalo this, squeeze. This poor guy, uh, we had a Matthew Smith, 36 years old. He took his box truck. What was he, an electrician? I don't know what he, he was. Uh, so anyway, he, it sounds like from an eyewitness that he sped up to hit a tree yeah, right near his house, I yeah. think in front of his house. I, th I think both, there's two stories there, and both of them sound like there were some suicidal thoughts there. I mean, yep. the guy drove a train, the guy, another guy pointed a gun. You pointed a gun at a cop, you got to expect there's going to be some bad stuff Yeah, happening. that's suicide. Yeah. So. so anyway, that man was, the guy in Dresden, his name was Frank Foss Jr., but anyway, be interesting to see what happens to Matthew Brackley. You know, it's funny, you know, here's a guy that, you know, seems like an upstanding citizen all of a sudden, gets in his car, heads for Washington. And well, joins, he flew down there that day. Joins the rest of the crew. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, you, if you're, everybody else is jumping over the bridge, you're going to jump over the bridge? Yep. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Hartwood Regional Theater, they're putting their uh, twist on, on the uh, classic Hamlet. They're going to be showing that uh, next few weeks. And uh, so anyway, the classic. The, the 20 classic. years, huh? 20th. So one of the raffles, speaking of Hartwood, they got a raffle going on, and one of the raffle uh, winning prizes is a stay at the uh, Main Stay Inn, which is in Camden, an upscale inn that's been there forever and ever. So, uh, Damn Scott is good news for Damn Scott. Our mill rate went down a little bit. Yeah, but will your taxes go down? Uh, no, no, because valuations probably will go up. Correct. Which they probably. Probably will, you know. Now, you've heard for many, many, well, not many years, but a few years, you've heard about this Veggies to Table. It's up there off Academy Hill. Erica Berman is going to allow the public to come in, and she will give guided tours of her farm of vegetables and flowers. And uh, Lord knows how good they are, and Lord knows how much food they donate to the community. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, she won an award for the ch from the Chamber of Commerce. I can't remember what the title of that award was, but... Yep. Uh, community was service, award, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, maybe some of those, maybe the award, the community service awards, they should think about these farms. Some of these farms, the Twin Village Food Bank, yep. you know, all this stuff. Yep. So now, they, it's not in the paper, but speaking of the Twin Village food, the Jessica, Jessica Brightup is retiring. Retiring. Well, yeah, she's getting done. And wow. that's a big loss, boy. They, wow. She was... So she, Healthy Lincoln County, they health, just changed hands. Their their uh, director just left, and they got a new director. New director, now. and now they've lost Jessica yeah. in there, so... That's a little bit of a little bit of an upset there. And stepping stone there, and there's a there's an organization that could be a community service award or nominee. Stepping uh, they, yeah. stone. Karen uh, Karen Bouchelder yeah. actually received an award for them. Really? In the chamber things. Yeah. Yep. So the uh, they're going to have a big tent out there. So not only do they have a five bay garage, but they have now they're going to have a big tent, and uh, so just more things to sell. So they're mentioning that the couple new shops there at the Wiscasset Art Walk, one of them was Kate Bell's High Tide Printing, but they got another lady by the name of Maria Vitesse, Vitesse owner of Angelo Santo. Um, she's got 
looks like pottery. What is she, book. pottery? Is that looks like she, pottery. Looks yeah. like some, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. Angelo saying a new shop. <laughs> oh. Huh. All kinds got, of stuff going on there. We got Neil Hughes. Neil Hughes is a very, very accomplished artist. And he's going to be at the Sylvan Gallery. And, uh, Where's the Sylvan Gallery there? Where, where is it? It's the Water Street in Wiscasset. So Wiscasset's happening. They got yeah, some, they got some going stuff. on over there. They got some stuff. A few new shops, new art gallery, new artists. Newcastle, and, they're going to pay 10 cents more on their mill rate. Now you can get, um, you know, of course, I remember that playing sports in high school. You got to get a physical, yeah. you know? And uh, so physicals are going to be able, available August 8th. And uh, from eight to three, different locations. So, folks, if uh, you're a parent of an athlete, you got they got to get a physical. Yeah. Well, I mean, look what that is all over the news. Just that kid, uh, Bronny James, LeBron James' kid, 18 years old, cardiac yep. arrest. Right. They revived him, but right. Boy, that's a uh, 18 years old. That's that's pretty young to be having, you know, cardiac arrest. They're going to have a special town meeting on Walboro. No. Yeah, I can't believe it. I can't yeah. imagine it. So yeah. anyway, but what, this article kind of, they're talking about this Sylvania house, the Hofstra's house. Well, it's the house right next to where the Correct. Sylvania was there. But it sounds like it might be a dismantling. They might be dismantling. Yeah, maybe. House, you know, it's probably a beautiful post beam house. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, well, it's all about Walboro. Julie Kaiser, she's in there, the big story about... Her her goings on. Yeah, how she got here, how how much she likes it here. Um, let's come. Let's select. They talk a little bit premature, but about school consolidation. Although they do not want to touch the Edgecombe School. Yeah. They, they're very proud of the Edgecombe School. They just hired two full-time teachers, and they said we are all set. All so, set. Anyway, it's hard, it's a, you don't hear that too often in schools these days. Well, you're looking down they're, down they're, the state of Maine, down in Gorham. They're on the third vote to try to get past the school budget. Correct. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Can't get it through. Yep. You know? So, and, and when it comes to pay to play, it just it just is not right. Mm -hmm. Not for a local, not for a public school. Got some stuff going on at the Waldo. Um, Union Fair, July twenty sixth. Yeah, going on. That's going on. Yep. Starts today. Yep. Today, yesterday. No, yesterday. Started yesterday, yes. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. People are confusing that with the Blueberry Festival. Is that the same thing? Uh, I don't know. Boy, there's a gentleman here by the name of Jack Garner. He's got a 39-inch striped bass. He caught it in it's the It's the 62nd. Group. Let's go back to shooting. I'm just going into the column. It's the 62nd anniversary of the Maine Blueberry Festival yep. at the Union Fair. Okay. So yeah, right. they, so they, they're one and the same. They're one and the same, and they're going to kick off the. They're going to hire. A, no, hire. They're going to elect a queen. Hmm. Nominate or elect? I guess I guess you win. You're like North Marlboro Day, fifty. Gonna be of, there. Fifty first year. Best chicken barbecue in the county, right yep. there. That's a good one. Yeah. In my humble but accurate yep. opinion. When it comes to chicken barbecues, I'm pretty accurate too. Yeah. So the, this new uh, in along the way, they write a nice column every week, and they're talking about they're starting their their plan is they want to have twelve independent cottages out in those fields yep. for seniors and so anyway they have started their campaign their fundraising campaign to build those so yeah. anyway. that was a pretty good striper that guy had there in the that picture was. that really 39 was. inch striper yeah. I wonder how much that buddy what that uh, baby weighed uh, 30 35 uh, prob probably I bet it weighed 25 or 30 pounds yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see uh, Glenn Chadman down at Mike's place this morning, yeah. and he's got a new book out, Mr. Purple. Yeah. And illustrated, he's illustrated. It's all about horror, of course. Yeah. And uh, I want, I didn't have course once. I went off on my phone, so I didn't get a picture of it, so we can't show you folks at home. Mm -hmm. But it's on sale at Mike's place, mm -hmm. the latest edition. It's right yeah. hot off the presses. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
I wanted to bring this up at the Waldo Theater. The, a very talented guy. His name is Stephen Kellogg, and uh, he's going to be playing August 5th, 8 p.m. And uh, he's this guy is very, very good. He's uh, He's been around a while, and he's actually the opening gal is um, a woman by a friend of mine, Caroline Carter, and she's going to be opening for Stephen, and that's August 5th at the Waldo. Bobby, i got to ask you something here. Yep. So go back to this editorial page. Now, I'm wondering, is there nothing going on in There's only two letters to the editor, yep. so that means there must have been nothing going on in Alma last week, yep. nothing going on in South Bristol, yep. quiet and pretty quiet at Waldeboro, yep. which Cassie's got, there, but must nothing going on, nothing going on. Well, Nobody's got any Opinions. Well, you know, the one opinion here is uh, Michael August and Jefferson. He's telling he wants people, you to slow down. He's telling people to slow the hell down. <laughs> You know, and in Clinton Evans, it's all about location. And, and being in the real estate business, yep. you understand location that. Location is everything. All right, we can turn the page now. I just want to point that out, yeah. Bobby. Okay. I, mean, yeah. I, I did a, learn something. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. And it affects the. It affects, it affects what we're it talking affects, about. It affects it was our show. It affects our show, <laughs> our time slot. And you know, we can usually kill two or three minutes yeah. just talking about those. Yeah, you know? so people, could you write in? Because, you, yeah, you know, we're going to have to make up a couple minutes. Well, we're going to have man. shot and was up. If we don't get some more editorials. <laughs> We're going to have a shot and was up here, you know. Well, there was a, a talk down at the Darling Center, um, Dr. Heather Cox Richardson, and uh, my buddy Richard Dick, Rick Wally. Rick's going to be retiring from the Darling Center. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's the, he's the head of the Maine's Lobster Institute. You want to know anything about lobsters? Talk to Rick Wally, but he's you know talking about the future. You know who's more elusive than a lobster? No. And that would be Heather Cox Richardson. Yeah. I've been trying for a year to get her to come on. She keeps telling me she will, yeah. but I haven't got her yet. Well, Heather, <laughs> we're going public with this request. Yeah. So, anyway. So, if, you, if anybody knows Heather, you can put a little pressure on her. To well, maybe we, can get, sit, maybe we can get Rick. Well, well, come on. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Rick's, Rick's quite accomplished. On, uh, he knows everything there is about lobsters. So... Anyway, folks, I, I said it before, but if you want to see some beautiful cars, Old Bristol Days has got the car show to beat all car shows, and it's going to be Saturday, August 12th, 10.30 to 2. They're going to have so a live much going band. on August 12th. Yeah, there's going to be a live band out there. And, uh, they have anyway, the uh, memorial you, service for Bobby Page is August 12th is at Schooner Landing. Okay. I think it's like 5 to 7 or 5 to 4 to 8 or something like that. The... Um, Noble, North Noble Days. The Lincoln Academy boys basketball team is doing a fundraiser with a band and a big barbecue mm. up to uh, Duck Puddle Campground. Yep. I mean, there's just so much going on August 12th. We need yep. three August 12th to get them all in because I want to go to all of those yeah, things. Yeah. Told the yeah. wife, we'll have to get up early and get started. <clears throat> Monhegan Coffee Roast is an interesting business. It was. Yeah. They, uh, they, they, got, they received an award. Um, Taste of Monhegan Coffee Roasters this month. The, the, um, the, uh, it's called the Mooring Chain. So they've been in uh, business. Some comes off the island, not a heck of a lot. I remember when, uh, not this owner, but Chris and Heather Lehman had the ice cream stand, and they used to serve coffee in the morning. They used yep. to get their coffee from Monhegan Roasters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Bristol Library's got a gal by the name of Jody Batchelder, and she, it's all about the Wawanock and Pemaquid, Maine Indians, and uh, she's going to talk about that. Maryland's slowing down a little bit. She's only got a quarter of a page. Yeah, she's only down to 2,000 words, not yeah. 3,000. Yeah, We've got the uh, summer music festival Thursday tonight, Thursday twenty seventh. Bremen, it's going to be at the Bremen Union Church. First band's going to be Rusty Hinges. They're the, they're the busiest band. They're, they're busy around. They're, they're the busiest band in Lincoln County. Yeah, well, they work for the right price. Yeah, <laughs> free. <laughs> and uh, the L.A. Music of the Lanaka Festival. That's next Friday, boy. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun down the school. How about this? Uh, you could take a train to the Lobster Festival. Yeah, but you're only going to go from Warren to Rockland. It's, yeah. it's only five minutes. They're not ride. coming down here? No. Oh, no, okay. they, 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 didn't you read I, it? I, no. I... I <laughs> I didn't read it. I just thought... We're reading you the paper, folks, that we haven't read. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, you know, I'd rather read about the Lincoln Academy Alumni Music yeah. Festival. Uh, and that's going to be a good 4th. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, well, we got some more government money coming for the flooding in here, and, and Maine King and Collins got that announced. I think these people in politics, that's their big thing, is just to be able to announce that they've got money coming to their constituents. Money coming in. Yeah. Memorial Bench, um, Memorial Bench at Fort at Colonial Pemaquid, and uh, so anyway, that bench is inscribed in honor of the late Jan and Bob Howell, who were great supporters of Colonial Pemaquid. And uh, how about this uh, sign they made at the New Harbor um, Cemetery? It was made by um, Andrew Leck of the Scottish Lion. And uh, it's going to be uh, in April. April. Well, it's already in. It's already installed, folks. <laughs> Bino at Washington Schoolhouse. Have you ever heard of George Sawyer? You know George. Yeah. Yeah. George has been announcing Bino up there for so many years that he can't even remember. <laughs> Bino at the Washington Schoolhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. How'd our Little League guys do? Well, Lincoln, Lincoln Little League All-Stars, they did okay. They beat Ellsworth, lost to Biddeford. Yeah. And they're going to advance to the state tournament. Yep. So, so they still could win it all. Could win it all. Yep. And Madonna, Madonna, uh, eight and ten-year-olds, they, they lost a couple of tough games there, and they're out. Yeah. Got some Mid-Coast Hall of Fame and, uh, announcees. Yep. Um, so a lot of guys are up a little north of here. Um, so the, uh, boy, it's unbelievable how many cars. <laughs> look at all the cars in that with I, I mean, look at these cars. You know it. It's going to be 150 cars here. Yeah. Hauling them in from all over the state. Harbor Room on Wheels food truck opens up in New Harbor. And, uh, so they've gone from the restaurant to the food truck. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wonder, it'll be interesting to see. And where is she set up? She's set up by the ice cream store, isn't she? Yeah, right yeah. there. So, anyway, the Tomasellos. Wait a minute, where's Habolite Convenience? Isn't that, we'll have to ask Mr. Dave. Yeah. Dinah Dave would know that. He's a Bristol guy. Habolite Convenience. A D's, oh, D's variety. variety. There yeah. we go. We got it from the D's that faint voice you heard yeah. was not God talking to us, but God's yeah. right hand. Yeah, D's and variety. Dave, and he's yeah, telling us. Dave's there at like quarter past four. You know, the sophisticated <laughs> TV stations, they got this thing in your ear, and they, but in LCT, but we just yeah. holler from the other room. Yeah. We, have tru works, we, have trouble with, great. we have trouble with this mic. Yeah. You know, he, he's got no mic. We don't I, like I can't even mic. imagine him sticking something in my I ear. I can't either. So, oh, Shell and shoot. Alan Tomasello, they've been involved. They give it up. Yeah, Lincoln Little League. They uh, they made Lincoln Little League. They really. Yeah. Um, so they're going to be all. Well, they proved that kids come back and do want to play baseball. Little kids like to play baseball. Yep, you got to make a mark on the brains of these kids because, you know, they're off to doing other things. So. Yeah. Second section. Yeah, we're on section two. Eagle Scout Project benefits Waldboro Free Clothing. Well, they did a bunch of. They built some shelving and. Yep, we got Dahlia, Dahlia, Dahlia Cunningham took over Art's Sake framing underneath the grill in the back parking lot. Oh, did she? Yeah. Yeah, she took over from Alan Baldwin. We sadly lost recently, and uh, so she'll she's doing she'll be that, huh? picking up the slack. Good. The, store, yeah. the, the town's got two art framers. There's another one up across from uh, Hannaford. Yeah. 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 Well, framing's. Uh, Framing is actually a, a quite an art. It's not cheap. It is uh, framing an art or art framing? Well, I'd say framing's an framing's art. Framing's an art, okay. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, uh, what do you know about Giovanna Gray Lockhart? She's the new director, executive director at Franklin. You know her, Bob? You met her yet? Nope. I'm going to see if we can get her on TV and talk to her about her background. Sounds like she's a pretty interesting gal. She's done a bunch of pretty, pretty interesting things. Yep, she, she does. Main realtors, we support affordable housing. They give a donation to CHIP, and uh, so that's good. Lobster Bake is going to feature local performers, Paula and Billy Arsenault, yeah. at the Link County Lobster Bake. It's going to be the in— Sandy River Rambler is going to be there. They're going to be at the Lobster Bake yep. as well? Yep. August 6th. They're playing Lincoln Home. 
Lincoln home. Yeah. What would you say? Well, I said uh, the Democratic, oh, Lincoln yeah. Democratic, County Democratic, Democratic yeah, no. Committee. Oh, okay. I uh, thought you said the Lincoln home lobster bait. Correct. I no. was confused. No. I wasn't wrong. I was just confused. Yeah. Just confused. Yeah. Heidi Root said they, we did a nice show with those guys, Ed. They did a paddle out to Hog Island with those kids. Yeah. How many Ooh. kids? Uh, nine of them in that one. Yeah. Yeah. So Must have been an interesting summer with all the fog and whatnot down around the coast. These kids paddling. Uh, they had to stay pretty close. Uh, that nerve, <laughs> nerve wracking yeah. for Haley. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. She probably would put a leash on them or something. You got a chamber chat coming up August 2nd, Coastal Family Hospice. So, the. Uh, Got a couple of local students. Tufts, Tufts University uh, dean's list. You got Dr. Goltz's daughter Clara, and you got um, JoJo Martin, his, yeah. uh, Jenny Mayer's son. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not, not easy, probably, to make the dean's list oh, at yeah, Tufts. I think so. I don't even think they'd let us on the campus. No. Nope. God no. So anyway, country fair up at St. Giles. July 29th, folks, a couple days, you can go up to St. Giles up on 72 Gardner Road, which is Route 126, and uh, check that out. Anyway, the, uh, yeah. a lot of OUIs. Jeez, a pile of them. It's Unbelievable. It's hard to believe. You know, yeah. I know we don't have any Ubers, but walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy, uh, this Michael Hovance, he's coming back to Waldo to do something. Yeah, one man show. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that'll be won't be at Waldo. It'll be at the Skid on for Library. Oh, they oh that's do it saying. in the uh, yeah do it in the little auditorium there. Yeah. Uh, hell, Bobby, we're getting down to the last well, minute or so. Well, here. we got to talk about Marsha Brandwine. She's going to be showing art in Booth Bay. Um, title of the show is The Great Outdoors. And uh, so, anyway, Brand Studio and Gallery is available by appointment on Pemaquid Harbor Road. She's quite an artist. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, all those. I, I wish I'd gone up to this Morris farm. All those pictures there, the open farm day. That would have been fun. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Pedro, he really looked like a pig. Yeah, just kind of like to laid, <laughs> laying low. Yeah, <laughs> good pictures. Booth, uh, Tim Sample still doing it. Yep. July twenty seventh. He's folks. down to the Waldo. Uh, down to the uh, tonight. Opera House. Tonight. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, Bobby, uh, next week, we'll tell the folks home before we run out of time here, before Dave shuts the cameras off and the lights off and everything else, he's going to give us a sign here. Next week, you know where we're at? Booth Bay Region. We're going to do the Booth Bay Register. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to switch it up. We've, we've, uh, we've talked about this news quite a bit. We're going to add a little variety to our, our little show here. What's up? And Try to get some viewers yeah. tuned in for Booth Bay. Yeah, and, and uh, have some fun with that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. So next week, we're going to be at the, I think it's the coffee shop. Oh, yeah. Right next to the paper down there, okay. and uh, hopefully we have a good day. We can do outside. If not, we'll, we'll find some place. So we'll get down the dock, some place, have a talk. So, uh, anything looking else happening in the mills? No, we got, uh, got a new hot top. Yeah, well, so hopefully when I get back, well, they, <laughs> they start, might not let you back in. Well, at seven this morning, they started blowing sand in front of my house, and so anyway, breakfast came a little early at the mill pond. There you go, uh, folks. We thank you for watching. I'm Larry Seidling. He's the man of the mills. TV Toby is home with Mum today, so we don't uh, have have him around. Bobby Weir, Dinah Day behind the camera. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard to get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207 242 8961 or email him at chase tree and tractor service jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you.